Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Bryce with BS Media, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review on the PlayStation Backbone for iOS. I'm going to be doing that short unboxing on this, and I'm going to do a review and just kind of go over the pros and cons and let you guys know my thoughts on it and if I think it would be good for you. But before we jump into the unboxing, if you've never been to my channel before, I'd just like to say welcome. If you like home theater, movies, music, video games, tutorials, and reviews just like this one, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell for more notifications on my next videos that will be upcoming. And please hit that like button as it does help the algorithm and get this out to more people. With that being said, guys, let's jump into the unbox. So this is the unboxing of the actual Backbone controller. Here is the outside of the box. It shows that that at the very top, made for iPhone. This is the iOS version. It's got the Backbone logo wording on the side. A little bit more information on the back end. And on the bottom end, just kind of tells you a little bit more about the controller itself. So now we're going to go ahead and slide off the sleeve and get that out of there. It just It's basically just a small black box uh, with a little flip lid kind of. Kind of took me a second to get it open because I don't have much nails going on. So it was, <laughs> it was a little bit hard to get this opened up, uh, but it just slides open. So here is the controller itself. Got a little bit of paperwork and there it is. Looks very nice. And at the very top here, I couldn't quite get it out of the box, but it is a iPhone 13 Pro Max adapter. Should also work for the iPhone 14 uh, Pro Max as well. And so here is the paperwork here. And the slides right out. And it basically just tells you how to put your iPhone into the controller, how to put it in there. And the controller itself feels really nice. The buttons click really well. They just feel really premium. Joysticks feel really nice. And I'm really enjoying uh, just how it feels in your hands, honestly. And there is how you open it up. It just slides out. It's basically just held in by a spring. It feels very sturdy and premium. And there is the um, buttons at the very top. And then at the very bottom, it does have a input jack for headphones and also to be able to plug in a um, charging cord to charge your phone while you are also using the controller. So as we slide out the bottom part, here's a little bit more paperwork. It's just a little safety guide. There's not much to it. It has it in several languages. So that way, if you wanted to read that any time, you always can. But all right, guys, that is all of the unboxing for this controller. So let's jump right into the review. All right, you guys have now seen the unboxing of this controller. So we're going to just jump straight into the review and go over some pros and cons of this controller. So the first pro is definitely going to have to be the build quality for me. The build quality just really feels premium. It feels authentic because it is authentic. It is uh, licensed by PlayStation. Um, the controller itself feels lightweight, but not too lightweight where it actually feels cheap. I know a lot of third-party controllers out there are going to feel really cheap. They feel like they can't really take any wear or tear. I definitely feel like this can. Um, if you're playing like Mortal Kombat, something that has you really smashing buttons, something like that, you can grip a hold of this controller and it's not going to break in your hands. At least it shouldn't, unless you're going to, you know, just chuck it at the wall or something because you got mad, you just lost a game, something like that. Then maybe you might break it, but just everyday use, it's definitely going to be able to, it's going to be able to hold up and it'll be able to take some wear and tear for many years to come and many hours throughout the day. Definitely the first pro. Second pro is going to have to be the convenience of this controller. Honestly, you can just pick it up. You're good to go. Throw it in your book bag. Um, I don't think it's small enough to really put in your pocket just because the joysticks kind of stick out a little bit. But it's lightweight. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room, so you can easily just throw it in your bag. Maybe throw it in your back pocket. It might fit back there. Probably not your front pocket just because of those joysticks, like I said. And it's just really convenient because it's super easy. All you have to do is just connect it, and then you're good to go. All you have to do is just slide this out and then put that, that iPhone in there. And then you'll be able to use this for whenever you want to play it. You play it on the to-go. And just play it in the bedroom or something if you really wanted to and you didn't want to sit in the living room. Something like that. It just makes it really easy. And you don't have to think too much about it. And it's not complicated whatsoever. 
third pro is definitely going to have to be the functionality of this controller works great you know with headphones works great with a uh, with a charging cable so there's all kinds of different uh, things you can do with this controller what i really like about it is the different buttons that it does have and the first one i'll have to say is the uh, headphone jack itself so if you're trying to play late night games and you're not wanting to use you know just the speakers on your iphone or maybe you just have some premium headphones you can plug these in and enjoy those games either late at night or just with your headphones itself and it makes it really handy and then the second uh, port that i really like on this is being able to connect a, a, a charger to this as well so the controller itself doesn't need to be charged whatsoever it just does run off your phone battery but your phone battery of course is going to run down especially if you're playing games especially for a really long time or something so you can go ahead and plug this in and it will actually charge your phone while you're playing or you can actually take that lightning cable and hook it up to your laptop or your computer and that way you can actually play that way honestly don't know why you would use it for that function unless you're really in a pinch because the ps5 dual sense is definitely going to be much better than the backbone just in general but it is a great way to uh, be able to play those games and uh, use your controller just if you have that in a pinch and you know why not i think it's a really cool function to have and there's actually two buttons on the controller itself that I really like. And there's the screen capture. So you can start video recording as soon as you just start clicking it. Uh, all you have to do is just kind of set it up. And then it has different presets for you that you can control. And it's just a great way if you want to upload some of those clips to YouTube. I use that for some of my own gaming YouTube videos that I have posted for God of War Ragnarok. Uh, or maybe you just want to send it out to friends like, hey, you know what? Look, look what I just did on this game. Let me send it to you. So it just instantly saves to your photos library on your phone and it's just a great way to do it and you don't have to mess with the PlayStation app anything like that because if it's a really long clip as you guys know it's more of a hassle to try to get that onto your phone just because you have to go through a couple more steps this makes it a lot easier to do that and then also there is a button for the Backbone app and that is actually going to run into my fourth pro which is the software so the Bangbone app is something that is integrated with the controller itself. And once you actually connect it for the very first time, it will prompt you to download this app. And now by no means do you actually have to download the app. It's completely free for you to actually download the app itself. But there is two sides to it. There is a free side and then there is a paid side. So the free side is definitely the best part of the app. Personally for me, hands down, just because it has three vital functions within the free part of the app uh, the first one is you can recalibrate the joysticks so if you kind of have any issues with that uh, joystick drift or i should say just stick drift uh, or if it just doesn't seem like it's responding well at all you can always check those you can always check all the buttons to make sure those are working and then you can actually remap the buttons and you can switch that to however you like so those are pretty neat and that's completely free within the app and then it has a paid part to the app, which is $39.99 a year. And I think it varies about when they give you the free trial. I know with me, they gave me 90 days to try it out. But it it, well, it says 90 days, but then I've also seen where it says 30 days. So you might have two different trial periods just depending on whenever you get this controller and how long you've had it. Um, but once you start up the trial, just to kind of see what it looks like. It's basically just a glorified hub of everything as far as video games go. So it'll have your PlayStation app, Xbox app. It'll have uh, all kinds of different games that you can download, like suggesting games. Um, it'll have stuff from the, the app store itself, just like off your phone. And they have all kinds of different suggested games or even games that you've downloaded. So it has everything condensed into one app, basically, which is kind of nice, but honestly, I just use the PlayStation app, so I don't really see a big point in that. I don't think I'd pay $40 a year just to be able to use that, so I really think the free side outweighs the paid side. And that's just personally my opinion on that. So with that out the way, that is all the pros for this controller. Now, there is two cons, and I promise they're nothing too big. There's more of me kind of nitpicking on this controller, uh, but the first con is definitely going to be the price. Uh, these do retail for $99.99 at all major retailers and I guess I don't I guess I kind of understand it but then at the same time I don't because you can get a dual sense controller for $69 to $74.99 at all major retailers but then this retails for 99 
And I think it's some more of just being able to have the convenience of taking this on the on the go uh, to compare it to a DualSense controller. Now, the DualSense controller is basically, you know, the same controller as this, but it's going to feel more heavy duty. It's going to have the haptic feedback, which the backbone does not. So I guess it's just kind of those pros and cons of whether you want to pay more for the convenience of taking on the go, or do you rather just have the actual DualSense controller that's going to be more premium and it's going to feel even better in your hands. So I guess I can kind of see, and I think you're also paying for the Backbone app, whether you really pay for the subscription or not. I think it is helping pay those app developers, and that's why that price is, is associated with that. And the, the second con is definitely going to be the button noise. Now, the button response feels great, but if you're really trying to play this late night and you're just trying to play it in the bedroom, like I tried to play it next to my wife and... Just take a listen to it for yourself. And these buttons are pretty loud if you really start smashing them. <laughs> you're trying to play a shooter, you're trying to play a combat game. And yeah, they're they're pretty noisy, especially if you're really having to smack the button. If you're like in mid-fight or something like that. So if you're wanting to play them late at night and your spouse is a light sleeper, Probably won't be a good idea because uh, my wife, she would wake up just about every time I'd play it. <laughs> she would ask if I could keep it down a little bit just because it was so loud. So it's just something to keep in mind if you really want to play this for late night games. Then it might be a little bit on the noisy side if you want to use it for that. Well, all right, guys, that is all the pros and cons of the Backbone, Backbone 1 controller for PlayStation for iOS. And just let me know down in the comments, guys, do you already own this? What are your thoughts on the controller? Do you use it all the time? Or do you plan on picking one up and this really helped you out? Well, if it did, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you get notified for my next videos. Smash that like button so it will get out to more people. And leave me a comment, guys, and let me know what you think of this controller. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.